Hey gang, this is Anthony Ratzkavich with Gateway Community College. Today we're going to cover how to add, delete, modify users and groups within CentOS 7. So, first thing I'm just going to do is open up applications. We're going to begin with a little explaining as to what it is we're looking at or what the defaults are. Now, I already have a user in here named Tux. So I can use a command called finger and I can point out all of the information for Tux. So notice my login is Tux, the name is Tux Penguin, the directory is home Tux, default shell is bash, and I have no mail and I have no plan. So just wanted to show you that. I also have another command here, ID. If I want to ID my Tux account, I can see that my user ID is 1000, that's Tux. The group ID is 1000, the group Tux. And then groups is 1000, again, for the group Tux. So, <clears throat> to get started, we kind of want to look at what we have or where are these files stored or like these users where are they stored and the first place we're gonna look is we're just gonna cat the ETC password file here not pass password there we go and you notice that all of the information for my tux account is right here at the bottom every single thing that I read to you in the finger command now to explain a little bit about what this is the first field should be kind of obvious it's the login for the user the second field, now this is a legacy field. This is where passwords used to be stored. However, we have a different area to store our passwords for our accounts. I'm going to show you that in a minute. We have our user ID. We have our group ID. We have our full name or comment, and I'm going to explain that in a bit as well. We have the home directory or where it's the default directory for this user and the default shell. So, let me go ahead and just clear that out there. And as I said, we have another file that we actually store our passwords in. And what file that is, is it's the etc shadow file. So, oh, my permissions denied. Let's go ahead and just switch my user there, clear that out, and let's try that again. etc shadow. Now you notice here, whoo, look at that this whole thing right here that's my password now of course this is encrypted or hashed you know it's one or the other I've seen arguments uh, back and forth about what this is but obviously you can't just type this into your field that's why it's stored into this shadow file so again what we have is we have our username our password the last time it's modified, the minimum amount of days or minimum number of days required before a password change, so I don't have to change my password ever. The maximum amount of days or number of days before a password must change. Again, it's, you know, I, I think I'm going to change the system a little bit before this many days, right? Then we have the days of warning. Uh, in this case, it's seven, so seven days prior to my account being shut down because I'm not changing the password I'll have a week to make sure I get that taken care of uh, the disabled days is supposed to be right in between these two here and then the expiration of the account is right in the middle of those two so that explains a little bit about the shadow file now we also have another one that we're going to be discussing later on and that's the group uh, file here and just like the others it's etc group and we can take a look at what kinds of groups we have right now notice remember before I have a group ID of 1000 for the tux group and tux is a member of this so when we go to add our group and then we put our our user into that group we're going to look at this file again as well so let's Oh, one more command that I want to show you and that's PWCK if you just type that press enter it's going to take your password file and your shadow file compare the two mix and match and make sure that everything is kosher as you see here I have user HA cluster directory home HA cluster does not exist so I probably have some users within my password file notice these are a little interesting I mean what kind of a user is GNOME initial setup right it's not just for users who are using the system let's go back into that let me clear this out again 
We're going to cat that ETC password. And you're going to notice that some of the services that we have, like Apache Web Service, right? That has a user account as well. So if you're ever wondering, hey, what's going on with my uh, services? This thing doesn't exist. There's no user. It actually checks this file. So that's just for your added benefit. All right. So I've kind of set the foreground of where these are located. But if I were to just do the basic command user add and then add a user like Snoopy, which I'm not going to do right now. The question is, is if I type in this command, what are the defaults that are going to show up for this, this new user, Snoopy? So what we can do for this is we can just cat etc default user add. So what are the defaults for when I use the user add command? You notice the default should be that the group is 100 for the users group. The home directory is within home. It's uh, not going to be inactive when we start. It's going to be active. It won't expire. The default shell is bash. The skeleton files are etc skel, so it copies everything there as it should into that. So you have your default skel uh, configurations. And then do we create a mail spool? That's yes. Now, personally, I don't like to rely just on the default settings. I like to go a little bit further than... Uh, you know default I guess I'm just a little picky so we're gonna go over some of the options for the user add command here one of them is going to be the dash C option or comment option and I'm just going to say Snoopy hacker that's gonna be usually in the place of the user's full name so of course I'm creating a user named Snoopy I'm gonna uh, the full name is Snoopy hacker and uh, I'm not going to change the group. We could do a lowercase g to change the default users group or a capital G to specify additional groups. So say for instance you have a user that's within the users group or 100 by default but you also want them to be in the research group. Uh, you would add a capital G like this for additional groups. If you do, you want them just in research or that's their primary group, you do a lowercase g as such. Like I said, right now I'm not going to really worry about that. I also want to do the dash m option. What that does is it really enables the user to be able to log into the GUI interface. It makes sure that that home directory, so I'd have home, Snoopy, and then everything within that directory for documents, downloads, pictures, videos, so on and so forth. So this is a very important command, even though it might seem a little redundant, uh, it's really, really not. So uh, the other one is a dash P option, but you got to be careful with this one. When you put it in quotes, say for instance, I want to put password in all caps for my password, the actual password of all caps password is not going to work. The reason being is the dash P option is the password as it is encrypted with the crypt command. And I'm going to show you that before we actually go through this entire thing, just so we can copy paste, we're going to get that in. Uh, the other thing is I want to make sure that I can change the default shell. So I want the shell to be, let's just say, bin uh, C shell, okay? So they like programming in C. You would do it as such. So let me go ahead and I'm going to erase all of this. If you go open SSL password dash crypt, so the option to crypt that, whoops, there we go. You press enter, it prompts you for a password. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in a really basic password. And then you have to verify, yes, that is correct. And then it gives you that hashed out password right here. So you right click, you copy that. Now let's go back into all of our other uh, command line uh, for user add here. Whoop, clicked off of it. There we go. User add. Remember, dash C is a comment. I'm going Snoopy hacker and then dash M to create that directory. Dash P for that encrypted password. Control Shift V to paste in that hash. And then dash S, do double quotes, and I'm going to put Snoopy hacker into the C shell here. And then, of course, you have to specify your user, and my user's name is going to be Snoopy. So you just press Enter, create a mailbox file, file exists, that's great. Remember the command of finger, we can now finger Snoopy, 
Notice the login is Snoopy, directory is home Snoopy, the full name is Snoopy Hacker, the default shell is Seashell, everything that we just said in here. Now, another way that we can look at that, remember, is we can check that password file. And there we go. Now, notice the defaults in CentOS 7 didn't take. I now have a new group with a new user ID, new group ID, and it's all going to be related to Snoopy. So let's let's go ahead and take that, take a look at that. Uh, we're going to go to etc group, just cat that little file there, and you notice, hey, here's a group Snoopy with group ID 1001, no password, so on and so forth. Okay, so now that we have our user configured, hey you know maybe we want to change that user information around a little like maybe that user doesn't really prefer the seashell we're gonna use the command user mod so user mod and I'm just using the same exact option bash s I'm gonna switch that user to bin bash and then remember we have to specify our user so you just press enter on that clear let's do the finger command again and then you notice bam right here the default shell is now bin bash alright so let's clear that now if I wanna delete the user I would just type user delete and then the user name however for the purpose of this I'm not gonna do that I instead wanna modify this user to go into a particular group so in order to do that I know I already showed you the group account like the group file so we're gonna create a group check that file make sure that it works we're gonna change a little bit of this stuff within that as well uh, from uh, quite a while ago you used to be able to do group mod and then add the user you're gonna notice that's a little bit different now we have to use the user mod command however we're gonna get through that together so the great thing about this we're gonna go group add do a lowercase g 6000 and I want this one to be called hackers so I press enter and remember you cat the etc group file and here you are hackers with no password it's the group ID 6000 and I want Snoopy to be part of that so I'm gonna clear this out and instead remember I can't do a group mod and then add that user. There's a couple ways to add the user, but you cannot do it that way anymore. If you man the group mod command, you get the group ID, lowercase g, you can do help, you can change the name, you can make it non-unique, you can put a password on it, you can change to root directory here. So, you know, as you see, it's not, it's not add a user anymore. So let's cue to quit out of that, clear this out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do user mod. Now remember, it's a capital G for any extra groups that I want to add. I don't want to change the default group of Snoopy. I want Snoopy to be in his own group, but I also want him to be part of the hackers group. So there's a couple ways you can do that. You can do with the group ID of 6000. Oh, hey, what did I forget here? I forgot to put in the username. That's okay. So Snoopy. There you go. So 6000 and if I cat the group files you're gonna notice that Snoopy is now a part of the hackers group so that's great so what we're gonna do is you can also do user mod G and then actually type hackers for Snoopy and then press enter and that in essence is going to have the same exact effect I know it doesn't look any different but it would do the same exact thing you saw no errors so uh, if you wanted to do deletion of a group you would just do group delete and say for instance I want to delete the Snoopy group of course I can't do that because the user Snoopy is in there however remember let's go ahead and just do this user mod and we're going to do a lowercase g to change the primary group to hackers and we're doing this for the Snoopy account now if I do a group delete for Snoopy bam you see I took that user out if I go back into the group file then as you see Snoopy is gone Snoopy is part of the hackers group and again we're gonna finger Snoopy here just to check out his information and there you have it so 
I hope this helped you out a bit. Um, that's really, in essence, how to add, remove, modify users and groups. There, of course, can be access control lists put on the group, so you have uh, rights to particular files, and you can modify different things, or you can have different types of networking traffic based on your group uh, privileges. So, yes, it goes a little further than my tutorial here, but this will definitely get you started, get you under the right way. So, as always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, you know, please leave a like, subscribe, and as always, happy Linuxing!